Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So last time we have had a discussion only with respect to section A as far as model paper analysis is concerned. Isn't it or not? So now we will stress this discussion a bit further. As per the availability of time, now time has become very constraining factor. That's the only problem which we are facing anyway. So here is your section B. And this is model paper one of new course, correct? So in this particular question, section B, first of all, the question is uh, a P limited begin construction of a new factory on 1 4 2021. Again, this question has been is available in our notes. So, to be very honest with you, as far as this new paper analysis series is concerned, all the questions are in our study module, correct? In our study notes, which we have supplied. Uh, but still, and obtained a special loan of rupees 8 lakh to finance the construction. There are two types of loan. One is specific, also known as special loan. And there is also another loan known as general loan. So specifically, we have taken 8 lakh worth of loan to finance the construction and the rate of interest on loan is 10%. The expenditure incurred on the construction is we spent 5 lakh worth of rupees on 1 for 2021. Then again, we spent actually 12 lakh rupees and again we have spent. Now, if we will look into the expenditure, the expenditure is exceeding the amount of the loan. That means in order to finance this construction, we must have utilized some other loan. Now, question clarifies further that P limited's other non-specific loan, non-specific loan means your general loan, is 23 lakhs at an interest rate of 12% per annum. The construction of the plant was completed on 31st or 3, 2022. Advise the total expenses, including interest, to be capitalized as per the provisions of NDS 23. So, first of all, what will you need to do? First of all, we will have to find out the computation of accumulated expenses. How much expenses have so far accumulated in the current accounting year that we have to consider? In order to consider the same, first of all, we will take the date factor and the amount factor. For example, on 1 4 2021, I have spent 5 lakh. So I will call it on an average, my expenditure is 5 lakh into 12, that is 5 lakh. Correct? No problem. But the amount which we spent on 1 8 2021, even though we have spent 12 lakh, but in the current year, because we have to found till up to 31st of 3 2022, so I will compute the time period from 1st of August till 31st of August 2022. I think it is uh, uh, in month of August, September, October, November, December and three more months, eight months. So 12 lakhs into 8 by 12. This is how you are going to compute. Indirectly, when we say that we are computing average expenses, what does it mean? For example, I am spending this expense 1 8 2021, correct? And I am spending 12 lakh. If I am dividing it by 12, that means I am presuming that monthly basis I am spending 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh. So that means now from 1 8 2021 till up to 31st of 3 2021, 8 months will remain. So that means in the current year, 7 lakh worth of expenditure have been accumulated. That is the reason. That is what we mean by computation of accumulated expenses. Similarly, the last expenditure which we did on 1 1 2022, so quite obviously three months are remaining, so into 3 by 12, so that will be equal to 50,000. That means in the current year, my actual average expenses will be considered as 13 lakh 50,000. Now you have to understand that out of this 13 lakh 50,000, you have already taken 8 lakh worth of a special loan, correct? So that means rest of the financing would must have been done from non-specific loan. You are having a non-specific loan to the extent of 23 lakh. But now if I will take the difference, it will be equal to 5 lakh 50,000. That means in order to finance the construction, I must have utilized a specific loan, a specific loan, of 8 lakh, I must have utilized non-specific loan, non-specific loan of rupees 5 lakh 50,000 out of 23 lakh. I must have financed this. Is it clear to you? Now I will find out the interest on average accumulated expenses. So what will be my expenses? 
because we have utilized 8 lakh worth of specific borrowing and the rate of borrowing is 10 percent so that mean interest on specific borrowing will be equal to 80,000 and we have used 5 lakh 50,000 worth of non-specific borrowing so interest will be 5 lakh 50 into 12 percent because rate of borrowing of specific is 12 percent so total interest is equal to 1 lakh 46,000 that mean in order to finance the construction of this building we have paid an interest of 1,46,000 in the current year. So obviously this particular interest will be capitalized. So question is asking how much amount will be capitalized. First of all, how much actual expenditure? Now don't go for the average expenditure. Average expenditure is basically used to compute the capitalization of interest. Your actual expenditure is given to you in this manner. 5 lakh plus 12 lakh plus 2 lakh. That is 17 plus 2, 19 lakh you have already spent. So 19 lakh plus 1 lakh 46,000 further you are going to capitalize. So your total capitalization will be equal to 20 lakh 46,000. Correct. And next one is theoretical question. And this is also theoretical question. There is one more question in between with respect to depreciation. Now we come over to question number third A. C Limited has acquired 100% of equity of W Limited on 31st of March 2021. The purchase consideration comprises of an immediate payment of rupees 15 lakhs and two further payment of 3.63 lakhs if return on equity exceeds 18% of the subsequent financial year. If you remember, under India's business combination 103, we did some concept question and this is related to contingent consideration. Here, what we are doing, C Limited has acquired W Limited and C Limited acquired 100% of W Limited and it was decided that C Limited would pay purchase consideration of 15 lakh. Further, now I will have to add the amount of contingent consideration. I have already told you purchase consideration basically means fair value, fair value of the consideration. 15 lakhs you are paying of course, then you will compute the fair value of contingent consideration. In order to compute the fair value of contingent consideration, we simply compute the present value of contingent consideration. Since you are telling to the other entity acquiry company that you are going to make two more payments, that means one payment, then second payment 3.63. And you have been also given discount rate of 10%. So you will use the discount rate of 10% to find out the, what we call present values. So what will be the discount factor? You can find it out easily. Present value at 10% for first year is equal to 0 0.9091 and 0 0.8265, I think so. Then you multiply both these figures, it will be equal to 3.30, it will be equal to 3.63, uh, no, it will be equal to 3.00 something. So ultimately total present value will be equal to 6.30. That mean question is asking what is the amount of purchase consideration. So purchase consideration is <coughs> the amount which uh, you are going to pay to that particular company plus the amount of contingent consideration 6.30. This is this will become your amount of purchase consideration. Question is simply asking this. What is contingent consideration? Contingent consideration is one which depends upon something. Here is some condition also which we have attached. The condition is that we will pay you 6.3 lakh only if the acquiry company will earn uh, return on equity in excess of 18% in each of the subsequent two financial year. If the acquiry company will earn return on equity in excess of 18% in each of the next two years. Sub, next two years, I mean to say, then in, uh, then we are going to pay 6.30. If you remember while explaining, explaining the contingent consideration concept, I told you what entry we are going to pass on the acquisition date. Asset account debit, asset taken over to liabilities taken over, To consideration of course the consideration is to cash I will write for consideration correct that is 15 lakhs and then I will write here in this manner to provision for contingent consideration this is the way to pass the entry that is 6.30
If you remember, I also explained the point that if the target would be achieved, if target would not be achieved, then what will be the consequences? Suppose after two years, if the target will be achieved, then what will happen? I will have to pay this amount. My entry will be provision for contingent consideration account debit to bank account after two years. Correct? And if suppose after two years, if after two years, let us say, uh, things become clear and let us say target is not achieved, then what will happen? Then in that case, I will not pay the provision amount. Rather, I will take it back to the profit and loss account. My entry will be provision for contingent consideration account debit to profit and loss account. Although such deepness in, you need not require at this particular level. So this is how you are going to compute. I have done the solution also in this manner. Question is simply asking what is the amount of purchase consideration. Then part B, M Limited and N Limited were amalgamated to form a new company, MN Limited, on 31st of 3, 2021 who issued requisite number of equity shares of 10 each to take over the business of M Limited and Limited. The abstract of the balance sheet of the companies is given. Even this particular question is also given in our question. Anyway, here M and M Limited have combined. See here, what is the question? First, let me explain. Under reverse acquisition, we did one question, correct? In fact, two questions we did. And Second question, this question is ditto copy of that second question. Only thing is that here figures are doubled. Otherwise, in our study notes, same question, same figure, same items are there. But only thing is that figures are one half of it. So here the figures are doubled. So here what is happening in this particular case, one is M limited, another one is N limited. And both these companies decided that they are going to merge and form a new company. So logically, in this case, MN Limited is the new company. Generally, in practical life, when two companies merge, a new company is formed. Generally, it is considered as if MN Limited is the acquirer company and both these two companies are acquiring company. This is general thing which we generally presume whenever such a situation actually takes place in practical life. Further, it is given that MN Limited will issue requisite number of equity share to take over the business of MN Limited. The abstract of the balance sheet is also given to you. Now, this is the balance sheet which is given to you. Property, plant and equipment 15,000, 16,000. Financial assets 1,600, 1,000. Current asset 9,400, 13,000. Then there is equity share capital 12 and 20, 6,000 other equity and of M Limited and 2000 of L Limited borrowings and then we have current liabilities. These are the items given to us. Besides in this particular question, you have been given the fair value of the following items. It is given in the question that the property, plant and equipment of M Limited which is appearing at 15,000 is actually having a fair value of 16,000. Similarly, Property, plant and equipment of N Limited is having a fair value of just about 12,000. Whereas current assets, current asset is having fair value of 10,000. Of this company, it is having a value of 14,000. And besides that, you have been given in this question, fair value of the business. Do you know the meaning of fair value of business? Whenever we say fair value of business, indirectly it means this is basically the fair value of shares. Fair value of total number of shares. Total number of shares. This basically means fair value of total number of shares. Fair value of total number of shares. For example, here equity share capital is given. Although we do not know the number of share because face value is not given very clearly. So still we shall presume that whatever shares, number of shares, both these companies are there, their fair value is this much. Is it clear to you or not? Now, the question here states very interesting thing at the last. However, the, con however, the control of MN Limited is taken by the management's team of erstwhile N Limited. So, that is the point actually I was trying to tell you earlier. In practical life, what happens generally when two companies merge into a new company, generally, generally new company is considered as legal acquirer. Generally new company is considered as legal acquirer. While 
these two companies are considered as legal acquiry legal acquiry now problem here is that as now question has made it clear that for the purpose of accounting n will take control or as per some arrangement was made wherein control was given to n limited so that means when legal acquiry becomes the accounting acquirer or in other words when legal acquirer is not the accounting acquirer it is considered as a case of reverse acquisition so here n limited is legal acquiry but for the purpose of accounting it will be considered as accounting acquirer so that is why it is a case of reverse acquisition accounting acquirer now when you will become the accounting acquirer point is that when later on you are going to prepare the consolidated balance sheet you have to take one thing into account because now you have become the account accounting acquirer when we will prepare the consolidated balance sheet at the reverse acquisition in the books of obviously now accounting acquirer is the main acquirer only carrying value carrying value means the value the book values you can say in simple words the book values of acquirer company accounting acquirer will appear in the consolidated balance sheet for example when i am going to prepare the consolidated balance sheet later on even though property plant and equipment of n limited is having fair value of 12000 i am not going to consider it are you getting my point or not i am going to take only the 16000 so only book value or carrying value of accounting acquirer will be considered however because accounting acquirer will pass an entry in its books because now you are the accounting acquirer so it will be presumed that you are taking over the assets and liabilities of m limited because you will take the assets and liabilities at fair value of m limited so obviously in the consolidated balance sheet as far as m limited is concerned its fair value will appear but as far as l limited is concerned because l limited is the accounting acquirer only carrying value will appear you need to understand the these things correct so in order to solve the question first of all what we are supposed to do as you must have seen the first thing which i need to do is to find out the fair value of business which is given in the question fair value of business means the value of the share as i just told you that is 15000 of m limited and 30000 of l limited correct now it can be also seen that if you will total them up the total value of m n limited the new company is 45000 out of 45000 you have now share of one third however l limited is having a share of two third it can also be clarified from this way round that n limited is controlling now the things so l limited will be considered as accounting acquirer anyway you could have leave this this particular step why because it was given in the question that l limited is the controller accounting acquirer the first thing which i need to do now is that now because i am the accounting acquirer first of all i need to understand that now i will have to make the payment in order to make the payment i will have to find out the value per share value per share of my company that is n limited how how do we find the value of shares we take the total value of the share divided by the number of shares it is as simple as that isn't it or not so fair value per share we can find out see 30000 is the fair value given to us and in the question we have been given equity share capital as 20000 if face value of debenture is not given we always presume it as 100 if face value of equity share is not given we always presume it as 10 correct so 20000 divided by 10 we can find out easily that number of share is 2000 so first of all i will find out the value per share or fair value per share of accounting acquirer this is the first step which you need to do fair value is already given 30000 you have to simply divide it by the number of shares of l limited now at least you come to know that fair value per share of accounting acquirer l limited is equal to 50 now the next thing is that because you are the accounting acquirer you are supposed to pay the consideration how much consideration you are going to pay to the shareholders first of all you need to know and ask yourself a question you have to pay consideration to the shareholders of m limited you think on such lines 
हाउ मेनी शेयर होल्डर्स आर देयर इन एम लिमिटेड लेट्स हैव अ लुक टोटल नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स ऑफ एम लिमिटेड इज इक्वल टू 12 12000 वर्थ ऑफ शेयर कैपिटल एंड वन शेयर इज ऑफ टेरी सो 1200 इज टोटल नंबर ऑफ शेयर्स नाउ सपोज इफ यू टेल दैट वी विल पे यू बिकॉज़ फेस वैल्यू ऑफ योर कंपनी इज 10 सो वी विल पे यू 12000 डू यू थिंक दे वुड एग्री दे विल नॉट एग्री so logically what happens when you will make the payment you will have to see to it that what is the fair value of these 1200 shares because the fair value is given in the question of both the companies it is given fair value of all the shares of m limited is 15000 so their value is 15000 so they will tell value of our 1000 shares is equal to 15000 make us a payment of 15000 so next point is that first of all you need to know how much consideration you you will pay the consideration paid payable by n limited to m limited n limited is the accounting acquirer so i have told you that is how you are going to determine the amount of purchase consideration that mean the total value of shares of other company now other company will be considered as acquiry company correct so m limited is now your acquiry company because you are the accounting acquirer you are n limited so acquiry company's worth is 15000 you have to make them a payment of 15000 but how will you make the payment you will tell them well we are going to issue you shares but we will issue number of share on the basis of value of our share on the basis of value of our share i am n limited i am accounting acquirer i am supposed to pay you 15000 but i will tell you i will pay you 15000 no doubt about it but how many number of share i will i will deliver that i will decide by taking into consideration the value of our share so 15000 divided by 15 that mean 1000 shares we are going to issue you at the rate of 10 of course a face value of rupees 10 but at the rate of 15 it means correct so that mean we are going to issue you 1000 shares of rupees 10 each of rupees 10 each at the rate of 15 that is the point which you need to understand correct the total consideration will be equal to 1000 lakhs no doubt about that which i have already written now logically in practical life after this the acquirer will have to pass the entry all the assets taken over now which are the assets which we are taking over in fact i am not going to write the entry but i am simply going to tell you what entry i am going to write look into the column of m limited you have assets in the form of property plant and equipment so i will pass an entry property plant and equipment because i am the accounting acquirer i will consider your fair value if it is given so 16000 i will write property plant and equipment then i will look at your financial asset fair value of your financial asset is not given so i will simply write 1600 then current asset current assets value is given 10000 you are going to write 10000 so all the asset taken over two liabilities as far as liability is concerned one is borrowings amount of borrowings is 4000 no fair value is given and then current liability current liability is 4000 and if there is any difference that will be either debited to goodwill or gain on bargain purchase let's see which side the differences appearing correct it all depends upon whether your debit side is greater or what we call your liability side is shorter correct so this is how you are going to pass the entry this is the first entry which you are going to pass asset taken over account debit to liability taken over second entry in the books of accounting acquirer generally we pass after this i will also have to write the amount of consideration which i have written let me tell you to consideration consideration how much consideration we are paying you we have already seen 15000 worth of consideration then i will find out the value of goodwill or gain on bargain purchase is it clear to you then second entry will be consideration account debit i have to pay you 15000 in order to pay you 15000 i will write here share capital how many shares we are issuing 1000 shares uh, obviously i will have to write 10000 then i will write two security premium because 1000 shares we are offering you but we are offering you 1000 share at the rate of 15 so 1000 into 5 that is equal to 5000 this is how my entry will be these two entries basically i have to pass in my books as an accounting acquirer as a taker over to liability taker over and then payment of consideration
After this, I will prepare the consolidated balance sheet. Now, this is how we are going to prepare the consolidated balance sheet. That was the point I was trying to tell you. See here, first of all, I will write my value. My value, I will take the carrying amount, N limited. I am N limited. So, I will not consider while preparing consolidated balance sheet, I am not going to consider my fair values. So, 16,000 I have written here. Correct? This is the only point which you need to pay attention to. You will write 16,000. And your plant and machinery I took over at 16,000. This is the point I was trying to tell you. Through entry, you can easily find out 16,000. Correct? So, this is the process you will adopt. Similarly, financial asset, now you can write 2,600. 2,000, what is your current asset? 1,000 and 1,600, right? <clears throat> then I am going to write financial, just wait. Then financial asset, then current asset. First of all, N limited current asset and your current assets were taken over by us at 13,000, 23,000. So total is equal to 57,600. Now, in this case, equity share capital, first of all, we need to understand. When we prepare consolidated balance sheet and we have done so many questions on consolidation, we never write the equity share capital of subsidiary company. Here, subsidiary indirectly means acquiring company. Is it clear to you? So, acquiring company's equity share capital will never find place in the consolidated balance sheet. First of all, you will write your own share capital 2000 because you have issued 1000 worth of shares, see here, when we computed the purchase consideration over there, we found that we have to issue you 1000 shares of 10 each at the rate of 15. That means 2000 shares we were already having, 1000 shares we issued, so total number of share is equal to 3000 and into 10, so 30,000 worth of share capital will appear. Is it clear to you? Similarly, now I will compute the amount of other equity. What is the amount of other equity? First of all, let me look here. I am N limited. So, other equity of N limited is 2000. I will write here 2000. I will ignore the equity of acquiry company as we normally do in consolidation. Correct? Then don't forget to write security premium because you have issued 1000 shares at the rate of 15. So 1000 into 5, 5000 will be security premium. And then you will have to find out whether there is goodwill or gain on bargain purchase, which we haven't done. So you, I have done it here. Instead of writing the entry, I simply did it in this manner. Plant and machinery of your company, I took at 16,000 financial asset at this figure, current asset. Uh, is uh, this much then 27,600 and then from here you will subtract the borrowings and current liability total is 8,000 then purchase net assets is equal to 19,600 and for 19,600 we are giving a consideration of 15,000 so obviously this time there is a gain of 4,600 correct so 4,600 this time there is gain on bargain purchase. So this gain on bargain purchase you add over here. Gain on bargain purchase. 4,600. So other equity will be equal to 11,600. Borrowings then simply combine and write. Current liability simply combine and write. Rest of the question is absolutely simple. I have already told you the first thing under reverse acquisition after determining the what we call legal acquirer you need to know which company is exercising the control. So, if legal acquirer is not the accounting acquirer, then it is considered as reverse acquisition. In reverse acquisition, first of all, you need to understand that you have to find out the fair value of your own company. That means accounting acquirer need to find out the fair value. In order to find out the fair value, simply take the total value of the shares divided by number of shares. This should be your first step. Under the second step, how much consideration we will have to pay? It is also very simple. Take the fair value of the other company, acquiry company. This is the amount of consideration. Third step. Now, how many shares you are going to issue? Divide the consideration by the fair value of your company. So, that will tell you how many shares your company will issue and at what rate. Then, you will pass the entry for all the asset taken over, liability taken over to consideration and take the difference as gain on bargain purchase or goodwill. Then, make the entry for payment of purchase consideration and then prepare consolidated balance sheet. While preparing consolidated balance sheet, only one point you need to take into account and keep in your mind. 
that carrying amount of accounting acquirer will come as it is while the values at which you have taken over assets and liability will be consolidated. Is it clear to you? It is simple, not a tough problem. Next question. Again, relates to India 108. Same question, same figure. If this question is available in my notes. I do not know what I need to actually do here with respect to this particular question. Anyways, these are different what we call operating segments of this particular company. You have been given segment revenue. First of all, you need to pay attention. Your external sales and inter-segment sales are given to you. External sales means sales which these operating segments are doing to outsider and inter-segment means when we are selling the goods to the other segment of the organization. So, similarly, segment results are also given to you. Segment results may be profit or loss. So, here it is a case of profit. Again, there is profit, then profit, then profit, but there are losses also. Correct? And then segment assets of respective companies are given, respective segments are given. And of course, their total is given. The first step, what you need to do is, correct, or the first step, very simple step and nothing else. First of all, you need to find out and ask yourself, what is the total revenue? Only first question is amount of total revenue. In order to have the total revenue, first of all, you need to know the meaning of total re revenue. Total revenue means external sales plus inter-segment sales. External sales plus inter-segment inter sales. So, first of all, you combine these co columns. That means, in case of A, I will tell that total revenue is 500. Similarly, 1326 plus 300, 1626 plus 74 plus 150 and so on. First of all, I will compute the total revenue. And total revenue means external sales plus inter-segment sales. Inter-segment sales. Correct? Next step should be to compute result. When you will compute the total results, what you need to understand that you add the positive item separately and add the negative item separately. For example, as I told you, here some items are positive and some items are negative. Correct? And last step is, last step is, I have to simply total up my segment assets. That's all, which I have done. For example, see here. First of all, I have added and found out the total segment revenue. Correct? Simply, I added external sales and inter-segment sales. So, here I have determined the total revenue of each segment. So, my total revenue is equal to 3,000. Once I have determined the total revenue, all I have to do is now find out 10% of total revenue. As we call it in India's language, threshold limit. Total revenue or total enterprise revenue is 3000. I will compute 10% of that is 300. Now, if any segment has revenue equal to 10% or simply 300, or more, it will be considered as reportable segment as per this criteria, revenue criteria. If any revenue is having lesser than this, lesser than this, that will not be considered as reportable segment as per revenue criteria. Correct? So, all you have to check it this way round. For example, suppose we can check here. We have got the total revenue. Segment A is having more than 300. So, it will be considered as reportable segment as per revenue criteria. As per revenue criteria, I may say segment A is reportable segment. Total revenue of segment B is 1626 more than 300. So even segment B will be considered as reportable segment. Even this, seg sorry, all the other segment are having what we call lesser than 300. That means they are not able to satisfy the threshold criteria of 10% of total revenue. So all the other segment cannot be considered as reportable segment as per revenue criteria. Correct? Number one. Number two, now what you have to do is, see here, now we have been given segment results. Here, first of all, what you need to do is, as I told you, first to add the positive items, correct, separately. Now, if I will add the positive items separately, it is equal to 30, just let me check, 30, then plus 90, 
then plus 48, then plus 30, and then 42. Total of positive items, I told you, first of all, you do the total of positive items, 240. Then I will take the negative item. Here it is written negative item 540 and here I haven't written, I think negative item 540, here written, written. Okay, okay. Now I will add the negative item, 540 plus 30 and again 30. So, total of negative item is 600. Correct? Your first step is, as far as total result criteria is concerned, before finding out the threshold limit, first of all, you total a positive item and negative item. Take the higher figure between these two. The higher figure will be 600. Now, 600 will be considered as base. That means you compute 10% of it. That is equal to 60. This will be considered as threshold limit of total result. What I mean to say is, for example, suppose I want to know whether these segments are reportable or not on the basis of segment result criteria. I have to see the result. If that result is equal to 60 or more than that, it will be considered reportable. But if not, then it will not be considered. Now, I need not require to take into account positive figure, negative figure or something like this. Is it clear to you? So, for example, segment A's result is 30. Whether positive, negative, leave it. I will simply see, see to it whether it is more than 10% of 600 or not. That means it is more than 60 or not. No, it is not. So, A is not a reportable segment as, per, as far as this particular criteria is concerned. Even B is not reportable segment. Sorry, B is reportable segment because 10% of 600 is 60 and it is 540. So, B will be considered as reportable segment as per this criteria. Even C will be considered as reportable segment. D will not be considered. E will be, E will also be not considered. And all the other segment because they are having less than 60 will not be considered as per this criteria. So, when you apply the total result criteria, first of all, just make it clear in your mind that you have to total of the positive item, total of the negative item, take the higher figure and take it as the base. Compute 10% of that base and then start what we call finding out whether reportable or not. Segment, as it's no problem, simply take two. Total is already given. So, you take 10% of 200. That is equal to 20. So, because this particular segment is having segment asset as 30 more than 20 so a is reportable segment as per this criteria b is not reportable segment c is not reportable segment this segment this is segment d is reportable segment all other segments are not so question is asking us as per the different criteria find out the reportable segment this is what i have clarified here q limited has an identifiable asset this question, it seems, relates to end AS12. Now, in this, if you remember, under end AS, I talked about this particular fact almost in every question. Carrying amount, tax base, if you remember. I do not know whether you remember or not. Tax base and carrying amount. Question says that Q Limited has an identifiable asset with a carrying amount of 6 lakh. When we say carrying amount, it means carrying amount as per accounting books. Tax base also means actually carrying amount, but it means carrying amount as per taxation authorities books. It is having a carrying amount of 6 lakh. But problem is that its recoverable amount is only 3 lakh 90 thousand. Obviously, if in my books there is an item having a carrying amount of 6 lakh, and its recoverable amount is less than carrying amount, that means an impairment loss has taken place. So, 2,10,000 impairment loss I will have to write off. And now I will have to reflect this item at 3,90,000. That means now carrying amount after recoverable, after impairment loss is 3,90,000. Further, it is given in the question that tax base of asset is 4,80,000. The question is simply telling that as per the taxation authorities, this item is appearing at 4,80,000. 
moreover, taxation authorities are not concerned with the recoverable amount or impairment loss or whatever you do in accounts. Correct? Moreover, question has also clarified it. Further, it says that applicable tax rate is 30%. Impairment losses are not deductible. That's what the point actually I was trying to tell you. Taxation authorities are not considered with what we call recoverable, recoverable amount, impairment losses, etc. They are concerned with the fact that what value this particular asset in our eyes is having. So as per taxation authority, this asset is having a carrying value of 480. While now, as per accounts, this asset is having a carrying value of 390,000. Q Limited expects to continue earning profits in future. For the given identifiable asset, calculate the deferred tax liability for the period as per the provisions of AS12. <clears throat> While explaining the concept of deferred tax and deferred tax liability and assets, I so often used to tell you that first of all you have to see to it what is your carrying amount and what is your present tax base. Your present carrying amount as per accounts is 390 and carrying amount as per taxation authorities books is 480,000. Then you have to see to it that whether tax base is higher or lower. If your tax base is higher, since the tax base is higher than the carrying amount of the asset, I told you at that time also, you have never think on such line, whether carrying amount is more than tax base or tax base is more than, only think from one side, whether tax base is more or less. Tax base in this case is more than carrying amount. Whenever your tax base will be more than carrying amount, it will always give rise to deferred tax asset. Here it is. I must have written this thing over here also. Since the tax base is higher than the carrying base of the asset, so deferred tax asset would be created on the temporary difference of 480. Of course, the difference you will take, that is 90,000. <clears> and apply 30%, so deferred tax asset will be equal to 27,000. This is one way of doing. Otherwise, if you get confusion, you simply think on such lines. <laughs> Amount of the asset at this moment as per the taxation authority is 480. Ultimately, these values will get subtracted over a period of time. That means the value which you will get subtracted in tax will be higher. If in tax value will be higher, the subtraction value will be higher, it automatically means taxation income will be less. If taxation income will be less, your tax as per taxation authorities books will be less in comparison to your accounting books. Are you getting my point or not? You are not getting my point. So I will tell you in this manner. Suppose total income, I will explain the point now. Suppose my total income in future is going to be 10 lakh, 10 lakh. Just imagine for a while. And let us say I am going to subtract here 4 lakh 18. This is as per tax. This is as per accounts. Because value here is 3.90. I will subtract only this much. Correct? So my future income as per taxation authority will be equal to 5.20. And as per accounts books, it will be equal to 6.10, number one. Number two, now we will compute the tax. Tax is given to us as 30%. 6.10 into 30% is equal to 1.83. While 5.20 into 30%, that will be equal to 1.56. You must have seen that because these are related to future, in future you are going to pay less tax. So it is a sort of asset for you. That is why it gives rise to deferred tax asset. So you, if sometime if you get confusion, you can think on such lines. It will help you in determining whether it happens to be DTA or DTL. Otherwise, if you can re simply remember one rule, it is as with, with respect to asset that the rule is very simple. If your tax base is higher in comparison to your accounting base, quite obviously, 
So in that case, therefore, text asset will always get created. Next one is A limited acquired 70% of B limited for 70% of B limited. First of all, there is a company by the name of B limited. First of all, you need to understand that there is a company by the name of B limited. And A limited acquired 70% of B limited for rupees 12,60,000. And A limited acquired 70% stakes in it. A limited acquired 70% stakes in it. And for 70%, we have paid an amount of 12,60,000. And in order to pay 12,60,000, issued equity shares of at rupees 12, including rupees 2 as premium. That means in order to pay 12,60, we issued shares at a rate of 12. Now, fair value of B Limited's identifiable net asset amounted to 14,50,000. Net identifiable asset, net identifiable assets of B Limited on the date of acquisition, it is given to us is 14,40,000. 14 14,40,000. Analyze the information in the light of the provision of India's 103 and India's 110 to determine the value of NCI and goodwill, gain on bargain, purchase and show the treatment in the books of A Limited. Assume that A Limited measures NCI at fair value. We have already seen that after having computed net assets, all we have to know what is the value of NCI. As we know that NCI can be measured on proportionate share of net assets basis and at fair value basis also. Because we have acquired 30% of the shares, so, sorry, 70% of the share, quite obviously NCI share is 30%. So one way of computing NCI value is simply take the proportion of net identifiable asset and multiply it with 30%. If I am going to compute NCI in such a manner, it is known as NCI on proportionate share of net assets basis. I can compute in this case, but problem is that here question has asked me that A limited measures NCI at fair value. So we have to find out this time NCI value on fair value basis. So on fair value basis, how I am going to compute? I will see to it that how much I paid for 70% stakes. For 70% stakes, we have paid 12,60,000. So how much I would pay for 30%? So that will tell me the value of 30% stakes. So 12,60,000 into 30 divided by 70. So that will be equal to 5,40,000. So that mean on fair value basis, I would say NCI is equal to 5,40,000. So out of these net assets, we can say this much of net asset belong to NCI. Whatever remaining now belongs to parent. So I will subtract 540 from what we call 1440. So I will come to know that parent share in net identifiable asset is equal to 9 lakh. Parent share in net assets of acquiry company on the date of acquisition is 9 lakh. Now you sim simply compare it with the amount of purchase consideration which you have paid to acquire these stake. How much you have paid? You have paid 12 lakh 60,000. Since amount of consideration is more than what you are getting, quite obviously the difference will be considered as goodwill. So this is goodwill, this is fair value in this case, correct? And you can pass the entry also. I pass the entry here. Hmm. Net assets 14 lakh 40. Always write first net assets. Then always write the amount of purchase amount amount of NCI, which is 5 lakh 40 as we compute it. Correct. That means out of this much of asset, 5 lakh 40 thousand worth of asset belong to NCI. So whatever is left, that belong to parent. For that, you are paying a consideration of 12,60, so balancing figure you will get goodwill. And then you can make the payment for purchase consideration, consideration account 
in order to make 12 lakh 60 how many shares you are going to issue divide 12 lakh 60 by 12 you will get 1 lakh 5000 share right here 1 lakh 5000 into 10 10 lakh 50 and 1 lakh 5000 into 2 2 lakh 10000 this is how you will have to do this particular question then as far as question number 5 is concerned this question also has been taken from honestly speaking honestly speaking this question is also available in our valuation of goodwill and valuation of share notes you must have noticed in this question it is given that following balances as on 31st of march 2017 have been given to us 2000 lakhs then these are equity share capital then general reserve profit and loss account 12 percent debentures creditors then there is goodwill land and building plant and machinery investments stock in trade debtors cash in hand and preliminary expenses additional information is given that nominal value of investment is rupees 500 lakhs and its market value is rupees 520 lakhs what does it mean you have written here you have invested you have made some investment obviously we do investment in some stocks a stock could be debentures bonds shares etc 10 percent reflects that your investment is fetching you a return of 10 percent you must understand that return is always computed on the face value so that is why they have given you face value of these investment is equal to 500 lakh and their market value at this moment is equal to 520 lakh is it clear to you so this information they have given to you however this what does this figure reflects this 480 reflects that you have paid 480 lakhs to get this much of worth of fair value of shares or debentures and their fair value or muscle and their what we call market value is equal to 520 lakh Further, it is given in the question that following are the following assets have been revalued land and building, plant and machinery, stock in trade, and daters. Average profit before tax of the company is 2400 lakhs. Before tax profit is 2400, 12.5% of the profit is transferred to general reserve, and rate of taxation is 30%. Very simple question and normal dividend expected on equity share is 18% while fair return on closing capital is 12 percent goodwill may be valued at two years purchase of super profits obviously whenever we need to compute the goodwill on the basis of super profits we need to find out the closing capital moreover your rate of return is also given on closing capital employed all you need to understand two important aspects whenever we compute the amount of goodwill and recently i did on youtube chapter on India 103 over there I have explained these points so many times and obviously in our courses while explaining the concept of goodwill we have explained at great length that whenever we compute goodwill correct and especially capital employed if we are computing in the contest of goodwill in the contest of goodwill capital employed does not carry the same meaning as it carries with respect to other aspects of accounts that mean normally in accounts whenever we compute goodwill we simply subtract liabilities from the whenever in in accounts we compute capital employed simply we what we could do we simply take the assets and simply subtract the liability this is as simple as that however in the context of goodwill when we compute when we compute capital employed we will take over all assets no doubt about that but while taking the asset i will not take non-trading investments i will not take non-trading investments but how i will come to know whether the investment is trading or non-trading because here nothing is written if nothing is written always presume investment is non-trading is it clear to you or not as simple as that because normally when we do investment because our funds are being utilized by the other entity we are not utilizing the funds so that is why these are treated as non-trading investments so non-trading investments are never ever taken into account similarly if we have held upon an asset and if we want with an intention to sell it off later on such assets are also not taken into account while i'm talking about this only in the context of goodwill 
whenever we compute capital employed in the context of the goodwill, we never take non-trading investment, non-trading assets, non-operating assets, non-operating assets, work in progress. Honestly speaking, work in progress is sort of non-operating asset because asset is still under construction. We are not utilizing these assets. So we never take these type of assets. You need to understand that. This is the only area. Otherwise, rest of the things are very easy. You will take the land and building. If revised value is given, you will consider the revised value. So first of all, you will take the See here, I haven't taken here investment. Is it clear to you? I will take the value of all the assets. Then I have subtracted the liabilities. And my first step is to compute the closing capital employed. Capital employed always means closing capital employed because from balance sheet we compute it. And quite obviously balance sheet is prepared at the end of the year. So this is your closing capital employed. Once you are done up with the computation of closing capital employed, the next step is to compute your future maintainable profit or Average adjusted profit, we call it in simple language. Average profit before tax is given in the question 2400. Although nothing is mentioned below, but in the question it was written investment. And I just told you, you have to exercise caution that investment are always non-trading investments. So how much interest you must have earned? And interest and dividend are always computed on the face value. You need to understand this also. So because 500 is the face value of your investment, you, you must be earning 10% interest each year and you must be crediting it to your profit and loss account. And because, you're not, because your investment is non-trading, income of course will, will, be, will be considered as non-trading income and you are going to subtract it. So effectively your average profit, actually this average profit means normal trading profit is 2350. Now you subtract interest from it to get 1645. So this will become your maintainable profit, average adjusted profit, whatever you may like to call it. Once we have computed the average actual profit or average normal profit, what does it signify? It signifies that under normal circumstances, on an average, our company earns this much of profit. Now we are going to compute the normal profit 12% it is given is the rate of normal profit on capital employed. Capital employed we have computed. So now your normal profit will be equal to this much. Subtract it from the average profit. Now this will become your super profits. Multiply it with the number of years of purchase to get your goodwill. Only one point you need to take care that when you compute actually goodwill, it is very important to take care of investments. Suppose if this point is not known to the student, then quite obviously they may commit mistake. So logically we have covered today quite a bit and I think there is only one or two more questions are remaining. There is one more question that this is with respect to honestly speaking, even this question is from our study. Each and every question, every question has been taken no, I should not say has been taken, but I must say is available in our study module. Correct? So this question also is of consolidation. So this question and one more question. I have solved this question, but one more question where I need to discuss some points. So these two questions, obviously, now I will take in the next session. As I told you, there is positive time nowadays also. We have to cover up some other facets also for other category students also. Correct. For example, there are FR students now. We have to take care of their classes. We have to take care of CFR student and then Hindi version classes, then English version classes. These are the big problems and challenges for us. Anyway, on our side, we are trying to do as much as possible. So thanks for being with us. So and uh, then we, we shall meet you again.